What is going on world? If you're watching this, then you are probably just as excited as I am about the brand new feature of React called Hooks. It's got a good tagline and the tagline is Hooks. I was pretty blown away when I heard this announcement from the React team. I was not sure how to react originally. <laughs> However, after reading about it more, getting to play with it a little bit more, I can definitely tell you that I am very, very, very excited about hooks. This video is your complete introduction to hooks. What are they? Why do they exist? How can I use them? Are they making all of my previous React knowledge invalid? Spoiler, no. This video is going to be broken down into three quick sections. Before I even delve into anything, I want to have some disclaimers out of the way about hooks. Make sure that there is no FUD going around for hooks because when the developer community gets going and there's some misinformation that gets started, uh, uh, things get gross. First disclaimer, there is no breaking changes to React. This feature of hooks is completely additive in the sense that it is new, it's adding new functionality and it is not changing any existing functionality. So everything that you know, love and use with React is not changing at all. Two, uh, hooks is opt-in. You don't have to use hooks if you don't want to. This is up to you if you want to play with something new. If you actually see an immediate need for hooks, then you can start using it. But it means that your existing React applications can be unmodified, they don't have to change, and then you can incrementally opt into using hooks. Number three is related to that in the sense that hooks is 100% backwards compatible. That means that you can use hooks with your existing applications and they can work in harmony, in sweet, sweet harmony together and you don't have to worry about anything, any, any big migration that goes on. You can just add hooks uh, incrementally, just adding a little hook as you go and then you can just have a whole application full of hooks. And then last but not least, it's available in the next uh, 6.x series of React, 16.7.0 alpha. It's not stable yet, but it will be, maybe by the time you watch this, it will be. I don't know, I can't tell the future. And if I could, I would not be making these videos, I would just be doing fortune telling. So why? Why were hooks added to React? When I explain React, I explain how there's four ways that you can actually make a React component. There's a plain old React component, there is a React pure component, which means that it's optimized, so I don't have to re-render if the props and state don't change. There is a function component, which just is like a render function. And with the introduction of 16.6, .6, there is now a pure or memoized function component as well. And there's one piece of this that's missing, uh, which is a stateful functional component. And that's where, uh, dear viewers, hooks come into play. This is actually adding a huge piece of missing functionality in React in the sense that you could not have state or any side effects in your function components. Whenever you want to take a function component and add state, you have to then refactor it into a class component. And that sucks. And also, class components are a little bit confusing to understand. I've been doing React for a while now, so I don't find them that confusing. But if you talk to somebody new to React, and you start talking about this dot state, how this dot set state, like what is, happens there. Uh, you have to learn these new, not yet finalized features of uh, JavaScript, such as class uh, instance fields to make bound functions to a class. There's all these gotchas with classes that with functions, they just go away. Something that they mentioned on the documentation page is that having just a function component means that there is the possibility that future optimizations by machines are possible. There's this library that a team at Facebook is working on called Prepack that's trying to do optimizations to your code and having there be just function components allows for these optimizations to be even better. There's no promises there by the React team. They don't want to overstep their boundaries, but uh, there's definitely a uh, hint, hint, not judge that there is the potential for nice optimizations there in the future. And last but not least, something that I wasn't even aware about until I read the documentation page for hooks is that currently in a React class component, it's very hard to share stateful logic. And when I say stateful logic, I mean things that rely on state to do logical things, such as if you have a prop coming into a class, you want to update the document.title and every time that prop changes, you can do that in component did update, but in component did update, you might also want to then change which API call you're making as well. And those two pieces of logic are very tightly bound in that one component. Extracting that is not really easy or pleasant to do so. So hooks provides a way to actually make that easy and more reusable. Okay. No more talking about hooks. Hopefully that gives you a nice preamble about what it is. Uh, uh, there's a whole slew of things that came with hooks. For this video, I'm only gonna focus on the two uh, hooks that I imagine are going to be the most widely used. They are going to have the most impact in your applications and they are the ones that I think you should know about 
first before anything else. If you want to learn more about the other hooks, stay tuned for an upcoming video where I'll delve deeper into those topics, including how to make your own custom hooks. If you want a hook to be like this or a hook to be like that, it is up to you. Every hook is a great hook. Okay, so let's first learn about the use state hook. Before we delve into things, let's actually look at the use state API. By default, use state takes an initial state. And what's great about a use state hook, in my opinion, compared to a, a class state is that it can be a primitive. And then by primitive, I mean it can be a Boolean, true, false. It can be a number, zero, one, two, three, and it can also be a string. So you actually have more flexibility in terms of what you're actually storing in state as opposed to always having to be an object, which is a limitation of the current class state architecture. When you call a use state, you get back an array with two values. One is the state that is the initial state setting it to, then a function that to actually update that state. There is a slight gotcha if you're coming from the class component world in the sense that if you have an object in set state, the set state function is not doing a merge of that object. It's actually going to completely replace that object. And as such, you have to do the merge of those two objects yourself. And in some ways, I think that's a little bit better because it gives you complete control over what is actually being put onto state. So it's kind of React learning from their previous mistakes, making things a lot more simple. So this is how you'd actually use, how you'd emulate the previous this.setState behavior with a hook. With that being said, let's go back to the code. To begin, I have a very simple class component with state. It is your most loved show more component where you have some text that you're truncating that you can then show or hide to see more of. This is the class component. It has state as we have, everyone knows, loves and appreciates. And there's some code here to pretty much toggle showing more or less. This is the most complicated piece of code, but it's one that I actually want to show how you can then start using state, starting to use the use state hook to make things even more pleasant. So, uh, Let's do some uh, live coding here. Function, show more function. Uh, and then we're just going to go up here and grab the entire contents of the render function because that's all a function component really cares about. And then here, I'm trying to use this.state inside of this. And of course, we know that's not going to work. So instead of having this.state as you would in a class component, I'm going to actually go up here and import the use state hook from React. And the use state hook from React is pretty nifty. Uh, by default, uh, the most common use case, you're going to only take one argument. And that first argument is the initial state for this use state function. It can be a primitive, it can be an object, it can be an array. And in our case, we're actually going to use it as a primitive, which is a Boolean. So by default, we're going to have this expand and be false. And this is us using the simple use state hook. And what's returned from use state is an array with two items in it that using the structuring, we can grab items from there. The first item in that array is the actual state value. So in our case, it's expanded just like we we're using in the class component before. And then the second argument here is a update state function. So we can say uh, set expanded. And this is similar to the class set state component, except in our case, it's only it can also just be a primitive value that we're setting here. So I'm going to erase this line here and I'm going to grab this set expanded. And then in here, I'm going to replace this dot set state, which doesn't exist. And this set the update state function. And again, I can name this whatever I want. In this case, I want to say set expanded, just like the class uh, set state function. It can take either an immediate value or it can take a function. So you can actually toggle values. And in our case, that's what I want to do. So let me actually delete the entire contents of that. And we're going to say, uh, uh, expanded to get the previous value. And we're just going to return the opposite of it. We're going to save that. And we're not actually using this yet because we're not actually exporting it. So instead, we're going to go up to the top, grab that, and now actually have this be our default export. Save that. And if we hit more, look at that. We just made our first hook component. And if you compare the lines of code, not that that is a benchmark, but one that I do definitely worry about sometimes if it takes more lines of code to fill the page, uh, it is uh, substantially smaller. Other cool things about use state is that you could actually use this uh, multiple times in the page if you wanted to, there, in the component if you wanted to. Uh, there's not a limit of just one use state in the function. You can do it as many times as you want. For example, if I just wanted to have a counter in here, I could actually have a, a count function and then say increment uh, count. We'll start it at zero. 
I'm going to say uh, current count is count to increment. And then on click, we're just going to increment the value. Increment count. We're going to say count plus one. Save that. We hit increment. There we go. Very easy to just get up and running with use state. If you have a function component that you actually want to add state to. Okay, cool. So that was use state. Now let's learn about the use effect hook. The use effect hook is essentially a replacement for all the lifecycle methods that you no love, maybe loathe about React class components. Something that I find a little bit icky about lifecycle methods in a class component is it puts a lot of onus on the developer to know more of the internals about what React is doing, which stage of the React lifecycle you're at, when's most appropriate. It actually asks a lot of a developer where you should put functionality in a class with lifecycle hooks. So let me actually show you an example of what I mean by that and then how use effects, A, how use effects will make your life better in my opinion, and then also uh, how to use use effect to make your life better in my opinion. And before I delve deeper into use effect, let's actually look at the API on the docs page themselves. The most simple API for use effect is just a function, which is a did update function, Since it's similar to component did update. It's ran after a function is rendered and committed to the screen. If, let's say you want to run some code before your did update function is ran again, as you'll see in the example coming up soon, you can actually uh, clean up after effect. And you do that by a very ingenious API, in my opinion, by simply returning a function from your did update use effect function. So by default, you have a subscription here, and if you want to, and you're subscribing to it, and then when you return a function, that function will be called, this function will be called before the initial use effect is called again. So you can clean up before you subscribe again. Another thing to know about use effect is that it's ran after every render of this function, and you might not want the behavior, and if you don't, there's a way for you to actually choose when this effect is ran. There's a second argument you can put in, which is an array of values that will only up run the update functions of your effect if those values change. So if the props.source value changes, that prop changes, then the cleanup will be ran first, and then the subscription will be ran again. And that will hold true for the, life, for the lifetime of that component. With that being said, let's go back to the code. So what I've made here is a component to show how you might use lifecycle hooks in normal applications, where you have a component that is mounting and you're subscribing to an API call. In our case, this API call is just incrementing the value every second. So that's very easy. I have a button here to change which project you're on. So when you change project, that timer gets reset, as you can see. And to handle that functionality, I have a component that update function, just taking the previous props and comparing to the previous props project change from the last props project. If it did, then I have to unsubscribe, set state zero, then resubscribe. And of course, if it amounts, then I have to unsubscribe and clean up after myself. So this is a lot of line of code, so not do that much in my opinion. And yeah, if you know React, it's not that complicated, but if you're learning React for the first time, that's a lot to ask of somebody. So let's see what that looks like with use effect. We're gonna go down here and make a use effect function. And then just like I did before in use state, I'm gonna copy and paste the entire render function contents. In our case, I'm gonna use props as well, so I can kind of just shim that right there. Cool, and also in this case, I need to use state as well. I need to use use state. That's gonna be a little bit tricky to get used to saying. Uh, let's copy and paste that. Um, set time on project equals use state, and by default, it is zero. Cool, that works. However, it's still inert. So I actually want to add behavior and effect for this function component. To do that, I'm gonna use the use effect hook. The use effect hook is more complicated than use state, but less complicated than the lifecycle methods. By default, use effect takes one argument, which is a function, and it will run that function whatever this function component is rendered. So just to show a very brief example, I'm gonna say, uh, hello, project. So let's save that. And then when you refresh the page, you can see that hello foo is rendered because that component is rendered one time. 
that's not really impressive. That's not really why you're here. You want to actually learn more about the nitty gritties about user effects. So let's actually uh, go into actually implementing the full behavior of the existing component. So when user effect is first ran, we ought to actually subscribe to our API. We're going to go up here and grab the same code from component did mount. And we'll put it in here to actually subscribe to the API. Then in a use effect function, you have the option to return a function that performs cleanup behavior when the function is re-rendered. And there's more details in the docs about why this is not a big deal to actually have these functions ran every time. I'm not gonna focus on that right now. I'm just gonna show you what hooks look like. So in our case, I'm just gonna return a new function, which is our cleanup function. And we're just going to uh, unsubscribe and reset our state. So we're gonna grab this down here paste that and we're actually set time on project to zero to have it show the new value. Now this is cool. However, by default use effect runs on every render and we don't want to subscribe and unsubscribe every time. If we were to do that right now, you would see that it looks like nothing is happening at all because it's subscribing, unsubscribing so fast that nothing is happening at all. Uh, so use effect actually has a very handy second argument, which is an array of values that will tell the use effect hook to only run if those values change. In our case, we want to only watch the project value. So when I save that, you can see that this is incrementing now. And if I change the project, because that project value changes, it'll then reset and run the cleanup function first and then the resubscribe function first. So you have kind of this more concise component right here that replaces the entire verbosity of the class component here. That is very, very cool to me. Now, of course, if you just wanna have one effect run when a component first runs, you can just use the very simple function uh, behavior of user effect. But I think in most use cases, you're gonna to have to have a little bit more work on your own half to actually make sure that the use effect isn't happening more times than you would actually like. For example, many times a component mounts, you wanna make a single API call, and you don't really need to take care about subscribing to a pulling API call. This is a more extreme example, but one that I just wanted to show you the full spectrum of what the use effect allows you to actually do. Okay, so that was kind of your high level overview about what hooks are in React, how you can use them, how they make your code, in my opinion, much better. There is no fear of having it replace all your existing React knowledge. This is additive, it is new, it is exciting. You can incrementally adopt it in your applications as you go along. This was just an overview of the two of the basic hooks that the React docs describe, which is use state, use effect. I will have more deep dives into the additional hooks that are here and also how to make a custom hook, which is the best type of hooks because it's custom for you, bespoke, your own nice hook to accentuate any outfit. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, like, subscribe, share it with a friend. Let them know that you've learned something from this folk on the internet named Harry. And if you are excited about this video, leave a comment down below. Let me know your thoughts, and I will happily reply and let you know my thoughts as well. Until then, I'll talk to you again in the next installation of this YouTube channel. Ciao.